three, two, hey, we're actually live, everybody. Live. This is 2OF Entertainment. Well, here we go. It's the man that promises you nothing and delivers. It's the veritable man motor mouth. It's Road Woods who feels the need to call himself Rob Vega. It somehow makes him feel important. Anyway, do have a listen and try not to throw up. I want to be a big uh, 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 oh. I know. I hear that music and I just want to be like clicking my fingers at a coffee house somewhere. I know, I know the feeling. No, I don't know the feeling. Cool. Okay. Very, very all good. right, so Stephen, how are you doing? Yes, all right, I'm good. good, my friend. I'm good. If there's any better, first of all, before we, before we get into anything, I just want to um, respond to something I saw recently. Um, I appreciate the um, uh, the interest in okay, just a fair disclo a full disclosure. So, I'm actually an English fellow, I was born in the UK, I came here on a little boy. You'll understand why I'm, br I'm bringing this up, and so I'm 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 an I'm an Englishman, not in New York, but in Johannesburg. Okay, so that's that's right, who right. I am. Um, but I spent mo probably spent the majority of my life here, and I suppose I am kind of South African to some extent. Yeah, I suppose I am. Okay. I went to school mainly here, so yeah, I suppose I am. And I'm I'm a box supporter, Springbok supporter, which is rugby, by the way. So okay. that's the that's the picture. All right. So okay. I saw somebody online. Um, reaching out and 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 trying the foods from south africa and it was interesting it was great i think it was an american fellow and by and large he enjoyed it but he got to a thing called these these well they come in various shapes but this is a rusk this is a rusk all right it's like a dry... no the, the, this is a fairly yes there are versions of it but it, it's it's a fairly unique thing here but anyway that's not the point um, it, it is, I think you could think like biscotti is probably the closest thing. Anyway, the point is, yeah. um, this clown was sitting, eating it just like this. So here's what I want to just clarify, clarify. If you ever come across a rusk from South Africa, you don't eat it. You don't. It's horrible. You need to dunk it. This, you need this. Yeah. No, but these, I, I thought that was fairly common knowledge. Mm. I, I, and it was the second time actually that I've seen people eating a dry rusk and i went what a horrible thing to want to do yeah, yeah, yeah. you pop the thing like that in your coffee you right yeah coffee's best or tea but i'm a coffee man there you go and mm. oh look at that how and to eat a rusk. You, and that's how you eat a rusk okay please don't eat them dry and say oh but then he was saying all oh, these things are horrible man they're so dry and i go yeah they are that's why you put them in rock coffee anyway right Rant well, about rust over. Now we know. So now the world knows how to eat a rust properly. I Not thought they did. Stupid American guy that didn't know what he was doing. Everybody knows though you dunk your rusks. I even know that. Well, so. I thought so. I mean, I, I'm. I did take that for granted that everybody, everybody around the world knew that if you had a rust, you dunked it in your coffee, and that's how yeah. you ate it. But anyway, I just thought I've got to clear that up. Wow. Yeah, please. Wow. Thank you for that. I can anyway. tell you. All, mm -hmm. all, all our fans, all our fans, is very yep. excited about that now. So thank you. Good, <laughs> good. And yes, we do have. And yes, there is a cookie or a biscuit here. And I swear to God, it is called Salty Cracks. Wow. Yeah, it is. It actually is called Salty. S A L T I C R A X. Salty Cracks. And I've always thought, oh, that's fine. That's normal. But yeah. when it was pointed out that means lots of salty cracks. Yeah. yeah okay. And we have a thing also here called a, a milk tart, which when I was living in the U.S., people said, what a dreadful name. And I went, "Yeah, you're right. It's a horrible name, but it's like a Danish. Yeah. But it, it, it oh, tastes wonderful. The Danish wonderful. are definitely milk tarts. Yeah, they're definitely. Yeah. Milk. Well, okay. That's another, that's another reality <laughs> entirely. But it, it, anyway, so I just wanted to yeah. put that up. All right. What else did I want to say? Oh, and I, something yes. else I really need to say is Please. this is a rugby mad country, as you know. Everybody knows. Yeah. And, um, and it's doing pretty well. I've got a good team. Mm -hmm. um, but... There's one thing I want to I want to have a go at about uh, the South African supporters. Not all of them. It's only usually about five percent of the people that destroyed for everyone else. All right, here it is, and it's true of any sport. When yeah. you are a supporter of a team, when you are a supporter of a team, can you guys hear me right? Hey, when you're yeah. a supporter of a team, you are not that team. 
You, you don't <laughs> share that team's abilities. It doesn't reflect on you. It's got nothing to do with you. In fact, if one of those guys from that team saw you in a pub, they'd probably punch your lights up. They get out of my way. All right. Very so right. that's just, I just want to get that out there. So okay. if your team wins, yeah. it doesn't mean you are a superior individual to the people, the supporters of the other team. That's just, okay. I mean, now that's obvious. That's fair. But obviously, uh, recently we, we played, the Springboks played the All Blacks, and I love yeah. the All Blacks. I, I mean, I, I do. New Zealand, yeah. oh, are you kidding me? Yeah. Uh, and when and when the sanctions era, when the apartheid era was, I got shot towards the end of it, but there was still a sanctions period, mm -hmm. and everybody, uh, no one would play against South Africa. So I used to watch and support and enjoy the New Zealand rugby team, which is the All Blacks. And sure. I still... Oh my God, I'll get in trouble for this. I still think, despite the fact that the Springboks have done unbelievably well, I'm very proud of them. Not that that really means anything in their life. Um, but um, I think it's great. It's nice when your team wins. Not that mm -hmm. it's my team. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't own the team. Anyway, right. so I, all, I still think the All Blacks are this... I still think they have the greatest legacy. That yes. being said, that being said right now, um, the, the, the Springboks seem to have the upper hand. Right. But that's all it is. It doesn't mean it, they're, they're superior people or we can trash Kiwi people or we can right. have a go at the New Zealand. That's absolute garbage. We should right. just say, thanks for pushing us to the, uh, the brink and we're going to learn from that and, and we want you to push us. That's what it's about. You right. don't know who's going to win. That's what's great about a great rivalry you don't know and if you win it doesn't mean you demolish the other team it doesn't mean you're better That's than true. the other team. you oh you guys are so crap but they're not if we blink if we blink they'll beat us fact okay. that's just a fact humility okay. is key. and i've just seen so many things recently where people are are trashing the um not it's probably five percent of the supporters that's the problem they right. they they're the biggest clowns so i just want to say if anybody is listening or watching from New Zealand, we love you guys. Push us mm. to the hill. We're not better than you when we beat you. And when you beat us, I hope the same applies. Right. Anyway. Let me just say this, if I may, because yeah. I agree with everything you say, except I'm a yeah. Mets fan. So when the yeah. Mets finally do win the World Series, then yes, we as the fans are better than everybody else because we only win okay. a championship every 50 years. So okay. I'm just saying. Right. So as a Mets fan, I agree with what okay. you're saying. But yeah. Okay. Now, I have a question, though. In America. Yes. The yes. Boston Celtics and the Green Bay Packers have actually sold stock in their sporting team, like 5%. So if you technically mm -hmm. own some of that stock, then technically you are part of the team. So, okay. you know, you have to, you know, I'm just saying, you know, but I agree with what you say, though, on the, on the, on the bigger scale. And I do like the All Blacks. Um, mm. I, I'm fascinated by them, their legacy. They're they're, yeah, they are. So, mm. And as you know, a few years ago, um, someone wanted us to buy um, a rugby team in um, South Africa, and we couldn't come to terms. So, yeah. So I remember mm. uh, I w got, yeah, business, got me all excited. Business can be a challenge here. Yeah, I will say that. Yes. Yeah. Well, the challenge we found is getting the money out. The South African mm. government likes when you bring it in. It's just like we were like, so we want to take it out at some point. You're like, oh, no, 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 no. You can't take it out. No, 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 no. No, no. It's like the, what's it? What's it? The what's it? Is it Hotel California? You can check yeah. out, but you can never leave. Yeah, isn't that, that was it? that was that we figured that was the money, and for the money they were asking mm. for everything that we were going to get, we're like, mm. we love you guys, but we don't love you that much. So, unfortunately, yeah. Stephen, what you will find, um, this is a this is a very complicated country. Um, yes. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Michael Douglas, when he visited here, he said that um, um, that South Africa was like a first world country with a third world jacket. <laughs> it was, it was, it, I love it. And 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 it's true. It's not a first world country, and it's not a third world country. It's it's right. such a, you know, America is, is very clearly even on the, even in the bad parts, it's still a first world country. Europe, right. most European countries are first world countries. Right. Um, uh, um, the, the Zimbabwe is a third world country. Um, right. Sorry, Zimbabwean people. It's just a fact. Uh, not that it's a bad thing, but right. this country is 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 an enigma. It's it's a bit of both. You could be right. you can be in a mall in Johannesburg and it feels like you're in New York. Really it does. Uh, and other times, uh, 100 k's away, you can be. It, it feels like you're in the slums of some unnamed African country because I don't want to insult any African country. But that's sure. literally that's literally the 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 contrast you get here. Now, some people find that charming and interesting. It's part of the history, and that's great. But but that's what it is. You can't really put it in a category. It's a, it's a, it's an enigma in that sense. It's got 
um, how many languages have we got? Like 11, we've got 11 official languages and God knows how many others. Wow. Um, it is, yeah. But so I want to do, in, in, in that Kumbaya moment, I wanted, this was sort of my rant. This is what I wanted to talk about because as I said to you before we got onto this, um, last week was pretty busy for me. I was yeah. driving around the country, um, the radio station I work for, we did a, a charity broadcast hmm. from one of the, the cities in the center of the country. Sure. So I drove down there. What people don't realize, it's actually quite a big place. It was about a right. five-hour drive through nothing. Right. Uh, it, and you go, oh, that's great. No, no, it's not. There, there was nothing. It is nothing. You drive out of Joburg for about five hours southwest right. of the city, and there's another city called Bloemfontein, which basically translates as Flower Fountain, if I can put it okay. that way. Sort of. They call it the Rose City. Anyway. Um, great. It's fine. It, it's, it's a nice spot. Nothing wrong with it. But as you come out of, out of, out of the greater Joburg area, yeah. everything disappears. There's nothing. It's huge. It's like, I guess, uh, uh, what could be, a? um, it's like parts of Texas flat, <laughs> just mm -hmm. nothing. Um, but literally with nothing, it, it's like the moon, there's zero. Uh, and, and it's, it's, it's great. It's beautiful. It's, it's, it's quite magnificent, but then it's also quite tiring because right. you drive and drive and drive and drive and drive. Anyway, so I went down there last week. That's why we couldn't do the show. Sure. Although, because you said, what happens if we lose connection? And that's true. Oh, if sure. you were driving, you wanted to do it from the truck. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, having, if you lose connection, having said that, having yeah. said that, uh, all the way down, perfect mm -hmm. coverage. Perfect. Yeah. We probably could have done it. it, was, it was, I mean, here's what's that, that, really funny. If you would have yeah. done it, not perfect. Yeah. <laughs> no, probably not. But that that's the reason I bring it up is because when I lived in uh, Ridgefield, Connecticut, right. there were people there that used to say to me, Wow, you guys got the internet. Yeah. I was, yeah. <laughs> and they were, I understand they, you know, you don't have no one expects people to be experts in other parts of the world, but the the level of surprise as to how technologically I'm gonna say advanced the con right. this country is was quite extraordinary to people. And I said, yeah, there are other people who've got mobile phones too and and yeah. stuff, you know. Indoor it's, plumbing. I know. Indoor yeah. plumbing, power. And and our, our power problems seem to have dissipated. We used to have that a thing called load shedding, which is kind of like uh, outages. But isn't uh, your schedule. post office going out of business? I just oh, read an article in the update. Oh, no, no, no. It, uh, it, uh, no, no. It never was in business, so don't even worry. Okay, that's just fine. checking. Just checking. Uh, no, to be fair, that's the, the post office here has never worked. It's never really okay. been in business. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, uh, Steve, I don't think I've ever mailed a letter in this country in the last 20 years. Okay. Really. Just checking. Um, if I actually want the parcel to get there, I will use a courier company. If gotcha. I want to flip a coin and go, well, it could be my lucky day, right. yeah, sure. Um, but not if you want it to get there. Funny gotcha. thing is, from a legality point of view, you still need a mailing address. Oh, okay. not that any Not that anybody mails you anything if they, right, 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 because it never gets to you. Uh, I mean, you know, it just hasn't worked. I know they're about to fold. I'm yeah. the the thing that surprised me is uh, when the story came out that our post office was potentially folding and things were going mm -hmm. wrong. I went, I didn't know they still existed. To be honest with you, I didn't know they were there. I, I, yeah, apparently, yeah. The, F, the so, FDA had a huge story a couple of days ago about the South, I saw it, it's a South African post office about to go away. And I was like, what? And I was reading I was, about, it's like a billion uh, rand in uh, debt and all that. It just kept going. Oh, yeah, I was like, yeah, wow. yeah. And it goes, oh, yeah. the people that are in charge can't fix it. And they're like, so I think it's the end of this month. They, you have no more post office, which apparently you didn't have anyway. So it doesn't matter. It honestly is not going to change anything for people here. Right. Um, yeah, we, I mean, honestly, homing pigeons is homing pigeons better. <laughs> and honestly, in this yeah. age of email and courier companies, what do you need a post office for anyway? So that's very true. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah don't, we don't, we don't, we don't. I mean, I did enjoy the fact when I lived in the US, um, what I thought was really cool, yeah. um, was that I could post my letter in my mailbox outside my house, which yeah. I thought was. Yeah, that, that's fairly peculiar to the U.S. I don't know that any other place does that. Or maybe they do. I'm not aware of it. Um, and I only found that out because I had a problem with uh, I had a mobile phone, and I went yeah. down to the, the local uh, mall there in Dan, Danbury. Danbury, Danbury, Danbury yeah. sure. Danbury, yeah. Uh, I think it's called the Danbury Fair or whatever it is. Yeah. Anyway, oh. um, went down there and took the uh, – I said to the guy, look, phone problem. He says, oh, here we go. And he gave me one of these boxes – that you put the phone and then you kind of bend like that yeah, and it yeah. seals the phone. 
And I said, what do I do with this? And he said, well, take it home, pop the phone in, and stick it in your mailbox. And I went, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah. I said, do you know where I'm from? We don't put things outside our house if we want right. them to be there in the morning. He said, no, it'll yeah. be fine. Just pop it in. I said, all right. So I put it in the mailbox, and he went, yeah. Then the post guy will come and pick it up. And I went, really? And he went, yes. That's how you mail the thing. And I went, okay. Look, I'd only been there about like uh, two months. I didn't know that. Oh, okay. I knew, okay. I knew obviously when I arrived home and uh, there was, you know, the little flag was up, you knew there sure. was mail. Um, but I didn't realize you could put your mail in there. So when he arrives, I mean, I know mm -hmm. people know this who, who live there, but yeah. it, it, it was kind of fascinating to me. I, I, would, I could put my mail in, not that I was really mailing anybody, uh, yeah. and then he would take that and put the new mail in, and sure. that would be great. Yeah. So it meant I didn't have to go and find a post box anywhere. Which was great. Anyway, um, that's, so by obviously way, that's nothing. That's dying in America now. What's happening? Okay. Now is when, well, yeah, because when, email. I mean, no, 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 no. Well, what happens no. with the new communities that are yeah. being built? Instead yeah. of putting a, a, a post box in front of everybody's house, they have a community postal center where you can still uh -huh. drop off your mail for the mailman, um, and he can still do it. But they don't come. They don't drive around the neighborhoods anymore. They go to one place and they go to go to go to go to go. And they're done because oh. um, you're basically lazy, um, and that's why. So that's why when you talk about so the you're saying, service, you're like whatever. So you're saying the home mail uh, mailing system thing is disappearing for if a new community. Yes, older communities that have it still have it, but the newer communities they're building today, whether you're it's a it's a medium income or it's a billionaire place, they literally have a central area where they put the mail and you drop off your mail. Um, they don't drive to your house anymore and um, wow. and do that. Yeah, I mean, there's old neighborhoods that's, still have that. But, yeah, it's kind of misses the appeal. Yeah, it kind of sucks. Yeah, because, I mean, I, I will say we had a we had a mail, the mailman. It's called yeah. the mailman there, not the post guy, yeah. the mailman. Sorry, i got to get it right, the mailman. And yeah. it's not a railway, it's a railroad, just to be clear. Mm -hmm. um, so the mailman used to, um, oh, he used to come and put things in the house. And mm -hmm. I remember the one day um, we when we were there, um, he knocked on the door and I went to the door and he was standing there and he said, um, sorry, so your, your door is locked. And I went, well, yeah. And he said, no, well, I, then I'm not going to be able to put your, you, you need to leave your door open because I can't put your post packages inside your house, nice. you know, your deliveries. Yeah, yeah. And I said, Jim, I said to him, mate, um, yeah, we, we don't, we don't really do that, you know, <laughs> and but, 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 but after about two months I did. And then it was fine. And I would order things, and then he would open the door and pop the mail, the, the parcel in. Box in, sure. And well, uh, that was after I got over the fact there were no fences around the properties. That was also quite oh. a that was also a cultural shock for me. I mean, it's great. Don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, one of the things that you have here on neighborhood watches, and I go, how can you possibly have a neighborhood watch if you can't see your neighbor's house? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, and it's and true. anyway, um, I so we had to get over them. I haven't time. even touched what I wanted to talk about, but this is great. This is fun. Let's go. Okay, so Carry on. Just so you, just yeah. so you know, when I was a kid, <laughs> when we lived yeah. up north, our, I, we used to, I, in the summer times, I would sit outside just to wait for the postman to get the mail. Because, you know, when right. you're a kid, it goes, it, it, they call you master. So it would be master, your last name, or the master of the house. They don't address mail like that anymore. So I'd be like, oh, look, I got it. could be some catalog. But it says the master. I was like, oh, my mom would like it for you. So the postman said to me, I have a surprise for you coming in a week. Because I'd meet him every day when I was a kid, sitting on the stoop. And one day he brings this mega box. And I was so, I was like, what is it? And I had made a comment in the summertime, I liked his pit helmet. And he mm -hmm. ordered me a pit helmet. And I have somewhere in storage, the helmet from like 1960 something from the postal department, which they don't even wear anymore. And that to me was the coolest thing in the world. And to this oh, day, wow. when I think back on it, that is the coolest thing the, that I, I'm thinking, I'm sure he had to pay for it. I'm thinking, what a nice guy, because his little six, seven year old was like, it's the postman, it's the postman. And he gave me, he got me my own pit helmet that I could wear. And I like, I would wear it all the time. And then as I got older, like, I was like, okay, I'm going to save it. And so it's sitting in a carton and it's like, and I still have it, you know, 60 years later. So, so it's awesome. So, yeah. So that was the postal service back in the sixties and the seventies. Now, I don't think anybody knows the, anybody's name.
Oh, we knew our guy. I, I, our guy yeah, was back married. Back then, I knew our guy. Yeah, back then, I knew. Well, our this guy. was. I don't know our person. Well, this was. This was the. When, when were we were there? From about 20, 2012 to twenty fifteen. Yeah. Um, we certainly knew the male guy. Um, now, other thing I've got to ask you is, you, you kept. Yeah. There's three things. I know you call it Z and not Z, and yeah. you call it a stoop, which is it's from the here. It's right. A stoop. It's a, a stoop. stoop. It's a, it's, it's, it's an offer. It's an offer. Yeah, but no, but the stoop on on outside, sitting outside, it is a, it's like the word trek. Although I'm not pronouncing it exactly right, because right, if right. you want to do it correctly, if you want the 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 Afrikaans pronunciation, it would be trek. But that's okay. beside the point. Um, like Charlie's throne. But anyway, that's right, another right. story. Um, so so trek and a stoop. These stoop. are all these are all Afrikaans words. They are. They like so. Okay. It, it's a, It's actually pronounced S T. It's actually spelled S T O E P. A stoop. It's a patio. Stoop. It's yeah. their word. For, it's their word for a patio. But I, I, I did hear you say that. Now, when I was lived in the states, people were using it a lot. And I went, well, that's interesting. Charlie's is really expanding your interest here, along with Elon and so on. They're really bringing the language. Yeah, to the I, I was saying but, stoop when I was back in the sixties before anybody knew. Who okay, were. but I'm just so, saying. Yeah. I'm yeah. just saying you'll find you. You might find that the, the origin interesting. And the other uh, was what's some. Oh, you call, keep calling him a postman. I thought it was a mailman. I thought it was a um, mailman. Mailman, postman. We used to call him the postman. Okay. I mean, let me I called him a postman. postman. I just, yeah. okay, just learning something. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Because technically, Good. when you yeah. post something, when I post, when I say, put, I still say to someone, if they're going to post, I go put something in the post. I don't say put something in the mail. I say put something in the post. So I, I still. No, I think I think you're. Um, I think you might find that your left leg or is it your right leg is English. Probably something's letting you. It could be my middle one. Yeah, but, uh, I think so. so. Something's there. I think so. I think <laughs> something's so. English. Yeah, you're losing so. it, Steve. You're losing it, man. You're drifting yeah. across the, the drifting across the pond. But, but I, I've been that way since I was a kid. So I've always yeah. said because <laughs> my grandparents said put it in the post, and yeah. so, so I just got that from them, and it's never really changed. The Z well, thing came from doing business all over the world. And right. people would say Z and C sounds so close. And I was like, you know, they does. And I was like, all right, you're right. It should be Z. So it's just like Adidas is they call Adidas here. And I call it Adidas because I told the story, right? My friend in um, Australia, Adi Desla. Melbourne, Adidas. Adi yeah. yeah that's, it was like, that, that's but that's story. correct. Yeah, but that's no, correct. I know that. That's name, so yeah. in America, when I go to uh, Dubai trainers, I'm like, hey, do you have Adidas? And, look, and I've had guys go, I know what you're talking about. And they're all excited. And have other guy goes, what's Adidas? I go, oh, I'm sorry, Adidas. And they're like, oh, yeah, Adidas. We got Adidas. <laughs> ah, and so like morons. Ooh. So it's like, so I, yeah. because I do international, I've tried to adapt to more of what the world says than what America says. And I write my dates funny. Like today to me would be um, 12, 9, 24. But because people okay. won't know what that means, I'll think it's – December, I have to write 12 September 24. And then when it hits 13, I go 13, 9, 24. No big wow. deal. Yeah, okay. so I've been doing that yeah. since I'm a kid. So uh, okay. I've I've sometimes done it the other way around. So for instance, my dad always used to call it uh aluminum, which is not a very English thing. Right. right. And he did he decided uh, at some point in his life that, that was the that sounded better and the, the, the provenance of the word was was you know it was actually aluminum. And yeah. somebody decided it was going to be uh, uh, um, um, aluminium because of uranium and and chromium oh, okay. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And he said, no, 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 no. no that, that's what it is. He, he platinum, aluminum. You know, that's what he. So I grew up calling it aluminum. And then everybody that's said, right. why are you, why are you trying to sound so American? And I said, why? That's the word. And they went, no, that's that's the American version. I went, yeah. I honestly didn't know. And and the other thing he used to do is he he, he said it's not a boot. The back of a car. The first guy to put a thing on the back of the car was was uh, was Henry Ford, and it was a trunk. Right. It was a big metal box, and it was called a trunk. And he yeah. said, "Where this boot, where this boot crap came from, I don't know." That was my right. father. I think he, I think he might have been half American. He didn't know it. <laughs> That's what I think. But but he, the, and, and it wasn't. And he said, "You can't put a V eight under a bonnet. It's the hood." It's the it's hood. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and but I'm I'm saying he wasn't trying to necessarily be anything in particular. It just didn't work for him. He said, right. "Hood, hood." Bonnet. Right. He said, "This yeah. is a bonnet. This is a bonnet. Yeah, bonnet's a hat that a woman wears." Yeah, right? and, and yeah. he said, "This thing in my foot. That's a boot." That's a he boot, said, "That yeah. thing you put things in the back of the car is a trunk." He says, "It sounds good. Trunk, junk in the trunk. Ah, oh, you know." And yeah. and that's what he used to say. And 
And, and he stuck with it. And I guess I grew up with that. And when I went out into the big wide world, people said, why are you trying to be something you're not? And I said, but that's what I know it as. Right. You know? And even now, if I do commercials here and I have to say aluminium, I have to think about it. I do. I right, do. Right, right. And it was, it was, everyone around me calls it aluminium. And it sounds, right. even when I say it, I have to make a big deal out of the extra I. Aluminium. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. But I mean, whatever. As long as people understand you. Yeah. You know, the guy, the guy who, who, when you said Adidas to him, he knew you, you know, what you meant. And it isn't yeah. Adidas because his name wasn't Adi. His name was Adi, and his surname yeah. was Dazzlet. So it's Adi Dazzlet, yeah. Adi Daz. Yeah. That's not Adidas. really, yeah. that's not really up for debate. If you want to pronounce it, you can call it Adidas if you like, but it's just not right. So yeah. anyway. Well, the first time I heard that was probably in the late '90s, because mm -hmm. I always called it Adidas, right? And I was in Australia, yeah. and my yeah. buddy said, "We're gonna go." He says, "You need some new trainers," and I'm like, "I knew what that was, sneakers." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, let's get some trainers." He goes. He says, there's an Adidas store around the corner. I'm thinking, Adidas mm -hmm. store. Let's go to the Adidas yeah. store. And I get there and it says, I'm like, oh, it's, he goes, no, it's pronounced Adidas. And then I didn't curious <laughs> about it. And I looked at, and then I read the history of Adidas. And I was like, it is Adidas. And I was all excited that it was whatever. And I was like, very cool. In fact, I told somebody about four or five years ago when the World Cup was on, it's Adidas, not Adidas. And he was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then he saw some special and they kept paying Adidas. He goes, I really believe you. And I'm like, what, you didn't believe me when I told you? What, you think I made it up? So, you know, it's funny. The people that are really into trainers or sneakers know it's Adidas. Because um, yeah. there's stores throughout the United States that the guys that really collect and sell high end. And if you say Adidas, they know. They're like, oh, you, okay. Like, there's the special. Here you go. You're um, serious. So that, yeah. yeah, you're a serious guy. If you're just going, I want some Adidas. You're like, yeah, we got some right here, $9.99 for you. So, you know, it's like, so some of the stores are very interesting. I have two Adidas's that they made special one runs on. And they're a bright yellow trainer. And I only wear them when I travel. And going through customs anywhere in the world, they're always like, I love your trainers. I'm like, thank you. And it's like that breaks the ice, makes everything go easier. <laughs> you know, it's like no problem. So like, okay, cool. So the guy that introduced you to the correct pronunciation was he an Aussie, did you say? No, no. Australian. Uh, yeah, yeah. Marcus from um he's from the land down under, where men are men and sheep are scared. Yeah. So that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We should do a whole show like that, dear Stephen. Absolutely. Um, you, I, I've got that's exactly what he sounds like. <laughs> that's right. Um yeah. I've got lots of Frankly. I've got lots of family there. I've got lots of family there. And they yeah. Some of them sound like that. Some of them sound almost English. It depends. Like around the Melbourne area, they sound the, the accent isn't quite as strong. But as you go up the East Coast, up to places right. like Keynes, you know, then it gets like totally oh, yeah. whatever. But but an interesting thing is I, I watched a um I don't know, the algorithm, the YouTube thing decided that I right. needed to see this. Uh, it was a chap uh, discussing how the Australian accent came to be. Do you know how oh. it came to be? What do you, how, what, what, would, what would your guess be? What would your guess I be? Know. Do you have a guess? No, okay. not even a so, clue. So many people think, well, um, it's it's got to do with the fact you had the settlers who came. It's a bit of a Cockney right. accent. And maybe there's some, some of the local, you know, the indigenous people. Maybe there was some sort of a... I don't know. You, no one didn't really thought about it, but maybe that's what it is. It turns out that if you combine, and I, I'm, I haven't fact-checked this at all. This is just some okay. crap I saw on YouTube like okay. this. Um, is He said, um, and it was English family, he said, if you, what happened is when the first settlers arrived, and bear in mind they were from all the countries in the UK, so you had Welsh people, Scottish people, Irish people, and English people with all those range of dialects and accents all mixed in. And they all arrived in the new world in Australia, and and obviously there was just a, there was myriad of accents floating around for the children to listen to. And what happened is that the first sort of generation of kids that were born in Australia, they right. heard these accents. They all got together, and this Aussie accent started to form. So okay. uh, allegedly, allegedly, it's got to do with the idea that it's it's like an amalgamation of all the accents, all just kind of, if you take a Scottish, Irish, English accent, roll it all into one, okay. you get that. I don't know if that's true. I don't know. There's probably some phoneticists going, no, that's not right. But 
I'm just you telling you what I heard. And, you should come on the show and, and tell us then. But, um, but I'll, but, I'll yeah, tell you something else. Cool. Just something. So yeah. this one other thing I wanted to mention, because while we're on the topic, because obviously accents fascinate me. Yeah. And I always thought this is this is something which I'd love to. We must we explore this a bit at some point. Um, it uh, was the, the origin of the American accent. And okay. people always thought, well, you see what happened was the English people went over there and then they, they lost their, you know, they lost their accent and it became the American accent. You know, it was, it, in other words, the newer accent, the newer accent was the American accent. That's what I always believed. I thought, oh, well, there's probably a bit of an Irish influence in there and, you know, whatever. You know, the sure. rotic stuff and the Scottish thing, whatever. That's And I thought, I'm happy with that. So basically, the English folk went over, then they lost their accent. They became that or whatever that was. <laughs> I hadn't yeah. thought about it too much, but it right. was interesting. Sure. It turns out that I apparently was completely wrong. Um, I watched a thing where this chap said, no, no, that's not true. What happened is the the um, the English folk that went over there, what, 400-odd years ago, Right. Um, actually sounded quite American. They actually rolled their R's. They were very rhotic. They mm -hmm. Apparently, they sounded a lot like the people, let me pick a state, sort of Ohio, that sort of accent. Okay. It's like one of the oldest sort of non-regionally affected accents, Would yeah. I think you could say, um, because obviously the Northeast region was affected by, uh, um, well, I'll get onto that. So what happened was, apparently, is mm -hmm. the English folk went there, and that's how they spoke. That's how they kind of they they rolled out. I was like, you know, it was super, and it was really. But how did you, how did you know on. that? Well, I don't know. He's a he's a he was a prof. He's some he's some uh, linguistics prof. Okay, okay. Apparently, okay. Uh, I mean, I mean, Steve, it could be from the end from the edge of his thumb. I don't know. I mean, okay, what do I know? Check. But okay. but it but let me let me tell you why it, it's quite interesting because all the folk came there. I mean, that we mm -hmm. do have the letter R in our words. Why mm -hmm. would you stop pronouncing the R? Right, right. It's super, super. Why would you say super? Well, I'll right. get to that. So what happened was they got there and they all settled and they had this, you know, they had, they, that's how they spoke. They, they spoke right. like that. And then the, the other people came and then some people went north, some people went south. Then the Irish folk came in and there was a bit of an influence there. But this is the thing. Um Sometime, I believe, in the late 8th, 19th century, and again, okay. I am free freestyling here. It was somewhere around there. So yeah. obviously, the, the 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 colonists, if you like, the the they were British folk, but they said, screw you to England. We we're now in America and goodbye. We don't want the king, right. goodbye. So, you know, there was the war of independence. Right. And um and they won. They said, piss off, right? So that was that. Yeah. America declared independence, and that was that. And then shortly afterwards, they became friends again. Because, you okay. know, they became friends again. Sure. And, but, but of course, the American country, America was really just the 13 colonies down the East Coast. Right, right. And what happened was they, they resumed trade. They started talking to each other again. Right. And what had happened in England is they didn't have the internet, they didn't have cars, they didn't have money and all that to show off. But they had the way you, you demonstrated your status was by the way you spoke. Okay. So apparently this is where received pronunciation came from. So the English accent was almost something they manufactured for people to look good, kind of like a like a vocal passion thing. So oh, in other words, in, okay. instead of saying, oh, really, that's great. Oh, oh, really, that's great. You know, it's sort of a yeah. stylized way of talking. And the more you think about it, it kind of does make sense because, yeah, why would you stop pronouncing all those letters? You right, can't right. see whatever uh, but it, but it but it but it took off but it took off this me right. speaking with this bloody thing as well but it yeah, took yeah. off it took off and people said oh yes he must be he must be well to do and then the queen and the king and they all took right. and it all it took off in the southeast around london and so on and so forth except for the cockneys right. that's another story but right. um it didn't really extend to scotland and it certainly didn't make it across to ireland so they were like no, okay. we're not having it we're not having any of that we're going to pronounce our r's thank you very right. much all right. And but they 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 then uh, started trading um, with the old British America, which was now the United States, right. and there was contact between right. the Northeast, between the New England Territory and England, right. and it had an effect on that accent as well. Which, oh, wow. uh, if you look at some of those, those New England accents, like like the Boston accent, there's no R. They've also right. dropped their R. The New yeah. York accent, where they've dropped their R as well. These were two areas. Just so you know, that, New York, we've dropped that, everything. 
<laughs> I won't drop her. Okay. <laughs> they, but, but they were the guys that had the trade. They were trading and they were, you know, they were uh, contacting, you know, the old motherland. And so yeah. they thought, oh, they didn't completely take it on, but thought, oh, that's quite nice. You know, that's a nice, that's a nice thing. And allegedly it had some influence on, on the New England territory, the Northeast, but it didn't really spread anywhere else. And of course, down in the, um, what states, uh, what states like the, what do they call them? They call them the redneck thing, which is a bit disingenuous, but where all the Scottish folks settled. What do they call them? Not the rednecks. What's the worst? worst the hillbillies, whatever. Down right. there, down the Virginias and so on. There were a lot oh, of... Um, we're brother, we're, when husband and wife divorced, <laughs> they're still brother and sister. Oh, please. Apparently, please. apparently, apparently, apparently there were a lot of uh, Scottish folk down there and, yeah, and they just doubled, good. they just doubled down on the R's. They doubled yeah, down. Okay. They said, no, we, we will be pronouncing our R's. Thank you. And, if you look at that, and if you see how the accent is, how it morphs right across the U.S., right? It, I suppose it does because the, the the greatest sort of change, the greatest impact, would be the northeastern area. But the rest of the country is kind of uniform-ish, mm -hmm. but not that, but not that area, which yeah. is what um, I don't know. In, I, this, Virginia, this could all be bullshit, but but this is what I've heard. Yeah. And Sorry. in Virginia, why well, we used to have a friend, and she would say she's going to bake a pot. And we'd be like, bake you're going to bake a what? She's going to bake a pie. And my mom would say to her, you mean you're going to bake a pie? And she's like, that's what I just said, honey. I'm going to bake a pie. And I was like, oh, okay. It's be good. So I remember that. And I would just laugh because my mom would just roll her eyes and be like, you know, we're from New York. We actually pronounce things. Then depending if you're from like Brooklyn, Brooklyn's like 33rd and 3rd. That's like a Brooklyn, you know, like, hey, how you doing? And so I love that it. New York accent. I I love it. I mean, when I lived there, I used to I used to sit on the train and just listen to people. And right, I tried right. to I tried to I got to the point where I, I could almost place them in, in the five boroughs. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was it was like that. And and even within the boroughs, there were little little yep. idiosyncrasies of the accent and, and language and slang. I think it's great. I've never really I mean, I suppose for normal people who don't do what I do for a living. They feel the need to, you know, like take an accent apart or something. I think yeah. I I enjoy all accents. I do, yeah. and and I think. Um, but the one thing I've realized when I obviously when I lived there, I had to develop. They said, "Can you do an American accent?" And I said, "Which one?" Right, you right, know, right. You, you, you're really gonna. And they went, "Oh yeah, okay." And I there's like a broadcast U.S. accent. I would say right. it's kind of like a which is sort of non-regional, which is true mm -hmm. of every country. And I'll tell you something else. Apart from the the rotic part of it, you know, we pronounce the R's. I would say Australia, South Africa, the U.K., and the U.S. with a few uh, variations. Right. Everybody that everyone that are broad, if you're broadcast in any of those countries, you try to right. get to a point where you're not. You can't be regionally identified. You right. need to be almost universal within yeah. that country. So, if you're in America, you don't really want to have a strong Southern accent. You might, maybe for a character, you should be able to do it, yeah. uh, or strong. I mean, I love the New York accent, but as a universal accent, I don't know. It, it you know, I'm not sure. It, it, the idea is that you don't want to be part of any partisan situation right. in the country, mm -hmm. so they can't identify where you're from. Oh, he's a New Yorker. Oh, he's a Californian. Oh, he's a Virginian. Whatever. Right. Or you have this guy who's kind of above all of that. You know, hi, I'm right. Tom Broker. Hi, I'm Tom Broker. You know that. Just right. I will say when I travel people. though, people yeah. say, "Oh, you're from New York," and I'm like, "Really?" And I don't because I, I say I say certain words where people go, he's "It's your you. face, Steve. It's your face. Uh, it's not your really, accent. You know, it's your face." I, I don't know. I, I, I don't have know. a big tattoo that says "Made in New York" on me. So, <laughs> um, but I mean, you know, it's one of those things. I, I say certain things, and sometimes you're from New York. No matter where, I could be in Dubai. I could be in London. I can be. I can be in the deepest, darkest jungle in Africa, and some tribesmen will go click, click, clack, clack, clack. Meaning, yeah, you're from New York. I'm like, yeah, no kidding. So I'm like, they figure it out. I don't know why, but yeah, I have. Oh, I. That oh no, no. Look, definitely, I can see it. It's yeah. it's uh, and 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 it's a good thing, by the way. It's not a bad thing. I it's know. um, I I tell you what, and and as an outsider, I'll tell you what it is. It's there's an attitude. And it's, it's, true. it's, it's not a, one of those. It, no, but it is. No, but it's fine. It's good. It's an attitude. It's a uh, hey, look here. You know, yep. hey, hey. Uh -huh. I, I, right. It's not aggressive. That's bad. But you know what I mean. It's like there's yeah. a there's a. I mean, it's a big city. There's a lot going on. There's like it's it's like a no time for bullshit accent. Just hey, yeah. come on. You know, it's 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 that. You got it's, things it's, to do. 
Yeah. 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 And, and not unfriendly, not unfriendly. Yeah. Just get on with it. Let's do business. Let's make money. Get out of my way. Ba 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 ba. Are you a tourist? Get out of my damn way. I walk the street every day. What are you doing standing there looking upwards? Get out of my way. Right. You know, it's whatever. Just, just move. Right. Just do it already. Do it. Do something with your life. You know, it, I told you, I told you that story. The first time I was in Austin, 2015, <laughs> I was walking down Sixth Street with a cigar, enjoying the day, just walking, but walking like a New Yorker walks, not like some pansy. And my, and all these people would say, "I'm with one of the guys that we were doing the thing with," and everyone's like, "Hey, how you doing? How you doing?" And I'm like, "What the? Fuck? What do you mean? How am I? Doing? I'm gonna beat these people with a bat." My buddy's like, "No, no, people, <laughs> people in Austin, Stephen, are friendly." I'm like, "Yeah, oh. keep your friendliness up. I'll push you in front of a bus." You know, so it's like hey, one of those things. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, I got you friendly right here. <laughs> that's right. I'm like, I'm standing oh. here. I mean, but it was, it was like that. And then the other thing which I found fascinating is. They would look at the buildings in the. I'm like, it's a building. You've never yeah. seen a building before. I mean, don't like embarrass that. us. It's like, true. And when we were on Wall Street, we had a, one of our first transactions. A bunch of us were born and raised New Yorkers. We had this one kid from Iowa. We had to go to San Francisco for a couple oh, of weeks wow. to do something. <laughs> and, uh, and this is when San Francisco was like in the eighties, where it was clean and nice and whatever. And I remember we were walking, going to Chinatown to get dim sum. And the kid from Iowa just kept looking up at the buildings and we're like, what are you doing? And he says, they're just so big and it's so clean. And then one of the guys that was like double our age and like born and raised in Queens looks at him and goes, hey, you're making this look like effing Taurus. Stop it. <laughs> like, uh, Taurus. Yeah, Taurus. No, I like it. We're not Taurus. We're not Taurus. We're New Yorkers. Let's go. But it, there's a thing about New York. And I think you have to, the mindset in New York is this. When anybody else in the world goes on a holiday, they say this is a really nice place. It's very beautiful, ba ba ba, a whole thing. When a New Yorker goes on holiday, you know what we say? These people can never live in New York. Yeah, they could never make it. You'd never make it in New York. It's like our mentality. I, mean, I heard someone say that, and when he said that, I go, "Oh my God, that's me." Everywhere in the world I go, I'm like, no, that, you couldn't make it in New York. You'd you be dead in the day. I mean, so that is very, that is a very true statement. It's just, um, that's the way we think. And Colin Quinn is the comedian who came up with that. And he's got a thing on Netflix. It's been there for 10 years now. It's called um, Welcome to New York. And his whole, I'm like, I, anybody that doesn't understand in New York, I'm like, you need to watch that. You'll get it. Because he goes but through I, the whole mentality of being a New Yorker. I have to say, so, I mean, I. I was there three years. I used to go into the city three times a week, and sure. I, I used to visit the city. And I, I will say, I, in defense of New Yorkers, I never really had a bad yeah. encounter. I, nice. I, I never had a problem. But but then, but then it was explained to me. Some a, a New Yorker, a New Yorker said to me once. He says, "Yeah, man, you're like a New Yorker with a foreign accent." Yeah, yeah, yeah very much. He said, your vibe, I, I mean, I said, I'm from, you know, I'm from Joburg. And he said, yeah, no, it's kind of like that. You know, hey, hey here we go. Yep. You know, yep. <laughs> what are you talking about? And he said, you see, you're a city boy anyway. So you you yeah. brought that here. You, if you were like a farm boy or something, you're, oh, my God. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, big yeah. buildings, whatever, you yeah. know. And, and 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 the thing is, when you're in a big, when, you, when you've lived in a big city, and I mean, obviously lived in London as well, when you, when you come from a big city, you, you know not to stand on the sidewalk and just, Oh my Dark. God! Oh. Just get on with it. If you want to look at the buildings, I don't know, uh, lie on top of a cab or something on the roof yeah. and, and drive. I don't know, but you can't. You, li you literally can't stand on the sidewalk and stare stare at the buildings because right. someone's going to mow you over with their feet. That's yeah. what I mean. oh yeah. You know, that's, and that's what's very cool about New York is like, <laughs> even when I go to Central Park and these people are like looking, I'm like, get out of my way. I don't care that you want to commune with nature. Go to a forest. This is a park. We got. I things. think. I think what you, you, I don't know if you've heard about that whole thing going on in, in Europe, uh, cities like Barcelona, where they're right. getting fed up with the tourists. The oh, tourists they want to, they, they, yeah, they're doing the untourist thing. Yeah. Now, I, I'm, I'm not saying New York's exactly like that, but if you, if you live in New York, you right. used to, you used to the architecture, you used to how mm -hmm. things work. But then it's quite a contrast when you get some guy like your friend from Iowa who's like, oh, this is like a, a like a new planet for him. Yeah. So, he's going to stand there and try to take it in and basically get in the way of the people. This is right. their daily life. This is their daily commute. They want to get from A to B now because i yep. got to get there. Now, what are you doing? Now, why are you here? Why are you, why are you taking up my time? Move. And, and 
I wouldn't say it's aggression. I, I never saw it as aggression. I just thought, just you just want to get on with it. Just just get we on got, with it. We have things. We we've, we've seen things. clouds before. <laughs> we've seen rain. We've yeah. seen snow. We've seen it. We've seen it. If Godzilla came and started to eat the Statue of Liberty, a New Yorker would be like, all right. And they would just, we got things. It's like, it's not a big deal. That's why I always joke if the UFO ever landed in Central Park, New Yorkers would be like, hey, hey, I'm walking here. You're in my way. They could care <laughs> less if you're like, get out of my way. I have things. You're pissing me off, little green man. They could care less. Like the New Yorkers could be, they don't give a rat's ass about, they got to do their job. They got to do this. Do, and that's yeah, it. They, and I think it's hysterical. And so they're very, they're very, um, uh, what's the word? They're very um, goal orientated. We're very uh, that's get out of our way. We have yeah. to take over just, the world. Yeah, do it. Uh, yeah. But but I I got that. Like on day one, I got that. Yeah. I thought, oh, this is this is my kind of city. This is great. I like the fact. In fact, um, yeah, I may not have been born there, and I may not have lived there for too long, but I I completely completely uh, got that. And I thought, yeah, yeah, this is good. Now we we we're doing stuff. This is not a sightseeing thing. Just do it. There yeah. you go. You want a picture of a building? I'll send you. A, I'll send you a yeah, photograph. Sure. I'll get your postcard. Get out of my way. Here's the best yeah. part. It was when the four of us had to go to Moscow, or we actually were in Moscow and the Ukraine and Georgia, that whole area for a while doing a deal. And I remember our client took us to Red Square. And so here's four New Yorkers in Red Square, and they're telling us stuff. And I'm like, all right, nice. We can go. And he's like, no, look at the building. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's a building. Right. I've seen a building before. It goes, but then he's explaining the tops and how they, I'm like, yeah, that's great. They make that. We got this shit all over the world. I'm like, oh, who cares? Nobody cares. It was like, so then we pulled out the map because he had to show us the map. And the only thing I remember about Red Square, and it wasn't really red, is that there's a strip club. And it said in, in the box around the strip club says historical site. And we thought that out of everything in Red Square on the map, was the funniest thing that a strip club is considered a historical site. We're assuming the building, not the actual club, but it was like, and we thought that was funny. And to us, that was like, okay. And then we went to Stalin's tomb. Here's the best part. On Sunday morning, apparently Stalin can't be bothered. He's, he's, he's at dinner or breakfast because we went there Sunday morning. No one's in Red Square. We're like, let's go look at the dead guy. Closed. Closed on a Sunday. I'm like, he's dead. How can it be closed? He's not going anywhere. So we would walk around and meet these people and they, um, these older Russians would have their chest of metal. And we were always very respectful and nice. And they, they with their English, they'd all be like, you're from New York. <laughs> yes. And it's like, even in Moscow, it was sort of like they knew. It was just whatever the attitude was. But we were always respectful and nice to these guys. And they would tell us these stories. And we had a field day. But I, so, I don't know. It's so, Steve, to I, travel. Yeah. Is, there, is, is there anything on planet Earth, yeah. do you think, that would impress a New Yorker? No, I think we, I, <laughs> that's kind of no. sad, isn't it? Don't you think it's kind of sad in a way? Like I hear, you I'm, a, I'm not. How do I put? I, impress is not the word. There's times when I travel and I look like, at something wow. like that's pretty cool. Yeah, even when I went to the Burj Khalifa and I went to the top, you know, the 162nd floor, I'm like, yeah, big deal. I did the World Trade Center, I've done the Empire State, eh, big, whatever. All right, look, oh, look, sand. Oh, how exciting, you know. So, oh, thanks for the. Thanks for the drink and food for the $9,000 I paid to come up here for an hour. Um, so there's not, even the malls there, they're very beautiful, but I've been to a mall before. I mean, I was, I thought it was funny that they had to drive the rich people from their cars to the Prada store, the Gucci, or Louis Vuitton store, because God forbid you walk 500 meters, but it is what it is. So, so it's, it's no, there's nothing that gets me so like, oh my God. I, I think, I think, I don't know this, but I think what might impress you would be sure. This continent, the stuff that's on this continent. I've been the, to your continent, though. Yeah, but but this continent, this 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 the like the wild, because that that is yeah. not in New York. I mean, the New York Zoo doesn't count. That when you when you're out there and you, I mean, I have several times in my life right. been in in some of the parks here, and you drive down a road and there is a right. big ass male bull elephant. He goes, yeah. Have you seen some of the people in Brooklyn? <laughs> <laughs> No, mate. Suddenly, it's like reverse. Here we go. Wow. I mean, there are some, there are some crazy ass stuff on this continent that I've seen. And big. I think this is a I don't know. big ass continent. Oh, I know. I don't know if I would be like, oh my god. I think to me, like when I go to these places and I and I like because no. I like the elephant, the animals, and I see them, I'm like, I'm not like I'm. Pr I'm like that's really cool. Like it's cool that that elephant can do that, or the zebra does that. Or does that. I'm I'm impressed by that. 
but it's not something like I'm like, oh, okay. That's, yeah, that's what, what, I wanted to, what I wanted to say is he's yeah. like a New Yorker as well. Like, hey, what are you doing here? That's right. Get out of my right. park, man. Get out of my park. Oh, yeah? You want a piece of me? <laughs> you want a piece? I'm six tons. You want a piece of me? I'll show you a piece of me. It's a little different. Now, and a New you, York cool. elephant. Yeah. Oh, could wow. you imagine? Oh, yes. Wow. I've seen one. Yeah. I, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I see I see the videos every now and then on YouTube where the, the elephant, like, you know, the, the, the truck's coming and the elephant's like, I don't think that's going to happen now. I'm like, I love this. <laughs> the elephant's just like, no, I'll move you if you don't get out of the way. And I've seen the you other know, one where the elephant stands in the road so a truck with hay can't get by. And then the other elephants start taking the hay from the uh, the truck in India. I think that's hysterical that they're that. Okay. I mean, I know they're smart, but that thing's the best. To be clear, the, the yes, elephants sir. in India are smaller and smarter. The, the okay. elephants in Africa are massive and... Yeah. I wouldn't say they dumb, but they're not as smart as the Indian elephants. <laughs> I'm talking about the elephants now, just to be clear. But yeah. I, I, I will tell you, Steve, I, I did go on a, I did go on a thing where um, they had this huge elephant standing in front of me, and he, yeah. and, and he pulled, he pulled an apple out of my mouth. Very. That cool. is, that is, that is yeah. just it was scary and cool all at the same time. But they are, I don't think people realize how big they are. That's what I'm saying. They are wow, and 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 this is a true story. We went on a night drive once, and I think they were tourists. No, they were not from America, so it's fine. I think they were from Eastern Europe, and the guide said to them, "Look, guys, uh, we're going to come across an elephant. Possibly, do not shine the torch into his eyes because they are actually slightly blind. Their eyesight is not great, and right. and he will." He's not gonna, or she's not gonna, you know. Especially if they're young around, they're not gonna be yeah. very happy with that. So please, if I tell you to lower your your flashlights or torches, yeah. please do it. Oh my God, we get there, we go through a little ravine, go, we go down like that into the river, dry riverbed, yeah. and right there, right there under the trees is this big mama, but she's got two little babies with her, yeah. and the and here we go with the ears, yep. and she was, and he said, all right, guys, we're gonna just back up slowly. Oh no, wait, 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 wait. And they're shining torches in this thing. Oh Look at him. He's God. so cute. No, but it was, uh, and, and then he was trying to back up and, and the, the wheels were spinning. It was pretty scary, but we got yeah. out of there. But, but the thing is, um, I'm not saying it's all tourists, but, but I have been on these excursions with, with tourists here. And I think they think things like the Kruger Park, which is, it's not a zoo. It's, we, are, we are basically the exhibits. When you go there, yes. you, are, you are the exhibit. You are in their domain. And they go, oh, that's so cool, and 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 this is a true story. Also, we were we were driving out, and there were hyenas. I don't know if you know you know hyena. Yeah, oh, I know. Got, yeah, what it's got jaws like a like a uh, like something really strong, or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah. It's uh, these massively strong jaws. I mean, they break bones easily. Right, right. And this just dangling his arm out the side of the truck, going, oh, oh, you want some food, baby? Oh, you 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 we go, boy, you we go. Uh -huh. And the guy, the the guy, just grabbed him by the back of you grabbed him here, right? Right, just right. pulled him short. Please don't do that. He's gonna. He'll. Yeah. He'll take your arm right off, or she will. Because yep. just it's amazing. That that's the thing. That's the thing that I've sort of been exposed to and grown up with is is right. that the 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 understanding of these animals and how they are. I mean, they are brutish. They are strong. They they'll kill you. They're, oh, they're, in they're a not heartbeat. In the, they're not, they're yeah. not in the zoo. If no, they're not. I, I've, I've gone, that's what I've people think. This, they I've think that they think this is a zoo. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm like. Yeah. I, I, no, all I think crazy. is, anytime I've ever done something like that, is I'm like, okay, you know, I like the ones that are enclosed because I'm like, I, I'm all good with this. But the ones that are open, I'm like, so I'm oh, food. Oh, no, scary. And like, scary I, I hell. know. And I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm food. And we're driving yeah. through yeah. the restaurant. Yeah, no, this doesn't work for me. So, yeah, that's a that's a different mindset. But yeah, it's like, it, it's the, the problem is, is they see now because people are stupid between YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and all this other crap, they see people go, oh, look at the little baby. Yeah, the guy grew up with the cub for the last 20 years and he rescued him. He looks at him as his mommy or daddy. He's not going to eat him. Same with a hyena or whatever. But, you know, they don't know you and you're coming like, hey, how you doing? They're like, oh, that's food. You know, and people are just stupid. And I and so you get what you get. See, that's definitely a New Yorker. Yeah, you don't know. You dangle your arm, we'll kick you out of the frigging van. Let's see what happens to you. So, you that's know, right. We're good with, we're so good with that. I, I think I think it's something that New Yorkers would appreciate. I do. Oh, I think we do. Would. But but it's, once again, it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, you know what the bull? It'd be like, hey, this is bull. 
Did you see that elephant? You got, could you believe the balls on that elephant? That's what the mentality is just different. Like I go to the, I took my, well, I took my wife to the zoo. We went to the Dallas Zoo and an elephant, a male elephant was peeing. So he has basically five legs. And she's like, oh my, I'm like, and I'm, and I, and I'm being, you know, I'm like, well, look at that thing. on, And like, to me, it's more of a joke thing. So <laughs> our mentality is funnier when something like that would happen. If, a, if an elephant's charging us, we're going to be like, do you believe the balls on that elephant? Like we have the, like, hey, we're driving here. It's still that mentality. It's like, they'll think it's cool because it'll be a story that they'll tell. But at the end of the day, it's going to be like, do you believe what that elephant did to us? How dare he get in my way? I know it's his city, but I was not driving here. He gets in my way. It's like when I lived in Montana, they have these deer and they're, they're like deers on steroids. Like they take down semi trucks and they're just mega. And when you see them, it's like, I'm driving here. And they're like, we don't get you driving here. I mean, it's like hysterical, but it's like, it's just, it's the mentality. I, a true New Yorker, in my opinion, you will appreciate it. And, you, and when I say an awe, you'll be a little bit, but it's nothing where you're going to be like, oh my God, that was, oh, did you, can you believe? Like, yeah, okay, whatever. Like if, when the plane went down in Hudson with Captain whatever his name in, all the New Yorkers, I always joke, everyone hates everybody in New York. The, when that plane went in the river, every single New Yorker's like, we got to take care of them. Like, boom, we're going to take care of you. Like, they, boats came, but people, that's, it's, it's a different mentality in that city. When something goes wrong, everybody loves everybody. Like 9-11, everybody loved yeah. everybody. When the yeah. plane went in the Hudson, everybody loves everybody. It's a very different, but the, and the other time, don't talk to me. Don't look at me. Don't do this. To, I, I don't want to know from you. But the minute there's an emergency, the whole city becomes like, that's my brother or my sister. I got to take care of them. Color doesn't matter economics doesn't matter. Nothing matters other than we have to band together. And so that's much different than I find in a lot of other cities. And that's, I think, what makes New York and a New Yorker in their minds. Like, you know, we don't get involved unless we have to, but when we get involved, it's a thing, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. When I, when I, when I first arrived there, um, I realized that uh, New York wasn't part of the U.S. It was a city of the East Coast. It's a city, it's a city of the East Coast of the United States. It's an island, and it, it's yeah. it, I mean it's geographically uh, separate. I mean it is, yeah. and 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 you can tell, and yeah. a lot of people they wear it like a badge of honor. Yeah, man. Yeah, don't don't yeah. know, and it, it is a different world, but it's also just a collection of people as well. And there's no time for BS. There's no time for. I remember when I first got there. I think the, the second or third night, I was uh, it was night. I was in Queens. I was catch. I think it's the L train back into the city. Yeah. I think it's the L train. I'm not sure. Anyway, right. it's been a long time. And and there was this big guy. I mean, he was big African American guy, and he came over to me. I thought, oh, I'm in trouble now. And he said, hey man, you got hey man, you got a light. And I went, sorry, I didn't smoke. Went, okay, but his 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 size, yeah, and his demeanor didn't match. Yeah, I mean, he was he was the size of a mountain, but he was like very hello, hi, good yeah. light, you know. Yeah. And I so I'm walking away, and I thought, okay, that was really stupid of me. But I mean, look at the size of him. I mean, if I said something wrong to this guy, I'd be dead. So I don't want, I don't, I wouldn't want to piss him off. That's, right. that's what I realized. But the chances of him being pissed off, pretty much zero. So yeah. Yeah. But I also think, and I know we have to go soon, but I also yeah. think, which is interesting, New York mm -hmm. today isn't New York that I grew up in. There's no respect. There's no this, there's no that. Like I see things when I'm there and I don't know if the New Yorkers, let's say of the 2000s, you know whether you're born right if being born is the same as when we were born there like in if i wasn't born in the, the 40s or whatever but the 40s 50s 60s and 70s when new york was still this is new york city and you were like i'm in, now it's sort of like it's i'm i'm from london san francisco that's what new york reminds me of now i don't think it has the same like guys like me the dinosaurs if you will the, my my guys in my group, 10, 10, 20 years either way, we still have that very much New Yorker attitude. Um, I think there's a small percentage that have it, but the most people now in New York, I don't think, have it because they've all woke. We don't want to offend. No, we want to offend. Like, we don't care. And there's a are certain you, mentality. So, are you, are you accusing the modern New Yorkers of being snowflakes? I'm calling them pussies. Yes, I am. <laughs> Snowflakes. I'm not that politically correct. Yeah, they're pussies. I mean, and that's their problem. They need to be back to New York. New York needs to grab yeah. New York by the balls again and become New York and not this well, Namby Pamby city. 
Well, when I left in twenty, when I left in twenty fifteen, it was still very much New York. So I don't know what you speak of. Is probably must have happened in the last what nine years? Is that what you're yeah, saying? It's kind of changing. Uh, it's and I think it, part of it's COVID. It's part of it's this. Part of it's everybody doesn't want to offend any. I mean, yeah, it's like it's a it's New York. Let it be New York. You know, it should still exactly. be. Yeah, you know. And then when you go do something, and somebody's like, "Oh, this isn't New York," I'm like, "That's the problem." And they look at me like, what? Like when we go into a company and people are like, hey, this isn't your, because my mentality is when I ask for it, it already should have been on my desk and it should have been there 25 minutes ago and you should have known about it two days ago. I shouldn't even ask for it. And that's the mentality. Like I want it done right and I want it done yesterday. And that's the mentality. Kicking the door, go forward and that's it. That's the whole mentality. That's That's it. But you see, you you gave yourself away there as well when you said the word forward. That's how I know. That's how you know someone's from the East Coast. Just that <laughs> word. Forward. Yeah, forward, it's, it's, yes. it's, it's, it's almost like forward, fo, like F O, yeah. forward. But that's it's fine. No, I'm just saying it's, it's things I pick up. And that's how, it, I mean, accents are my thing. That's what I would have picked up. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I think like we're Badge of Honor, mate. Badge of Honor. I think it's a great yeah. city. I, I'm, I'm sad know. if you, I haven't been there obviously in, in nine years, which is a shame. I'll send uh, you I a picture. It, <laughs> oh, I'll send you a photograph, man. <laughs> yeah. oh, but I, I mean, I got a bit of that. Like, I mean, the, the guys that sell stuff in the streets, yeah. two for a dollar, two yeah. for a dollar. I love it. The voices are big. The, yeah. the things are big. The emotions are, are big. big. Yeah. Hmm? The personalities are big. The personalities in yeah, New York are big. I love big. that. You're I think huge. that's great. But yeah. if we, as we've, we, have we said, when we, the, the former Dave used to be a part of these, um, we always used to say to him, the thing, the thing that I like about it, I'll tell you why I like it. I'll tell you why I like yeah. it. Because I think uh, emotionally, it's just Bang on, honest. Yes. That's what I like about it. There's no bullshit. And that's yeah. what, you know, you may not like being shoved out the way as a guy barrels his way towards <laughs> wherever. But let me, let me tell you something. You know, he's not bullshitting you. There's no time yeah. for bullshit. Yeah. And, and, and everything else is just, I guess, for a New Yorker, we'd just be layers of bullshit. I don't have time yeah. for this. Yeah. It's just he, see, he sees things or she sees things as, as people not getting to the, the crux of the matter. Just do it. Just what are we talking about here? What are we doing? What are we creating? Let's just do that. Why go around and eh, just do it already? And it, it, it's the way you get somewhere. It's the way you do something. It's the way you think about something. You don't have time for interpretation. And is the, does it taste good? Yes, then it's great. I don't care if it comes out of out of uh, Gordon Ramsay's ass. If it tastes good, fine. You know, that's it. And, and we have no time for that's feelings. Good. And there's no time for feelings in New York either. Nobody cares about your feelings. You can keep your feelings to yourself with your friends somewhere in a, exactly. in a low life area, but not not on the street, not with people. Not, not, that not you even don't at know. work. Not even at a job. Uh, there's no uh, feelings at a job. It's uh, like nowadays, I guess there is because God forbid you make somebody work. But back in the day, there were no feelings at jobs. It's like this is your job. Do it, okay? And then you did it, and you and you did your whatever. And nowadays, it's just okay. sort of like. So would you say? Oh, would you say it's just? A, would you say it's a, it, it's it's an honest competitive spirit? That's what I would say. It's it just used honest. to be. It used to be. Yeah, I don't think it is anymore. Oh, I'm sad. I'm sad. I'm okay. I'll, 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 I should write someone a letter about it. Sh- uh, yeah, what it, you put, Wait, write a letter, put it in your post, <laughs> and we'll see what year it gets here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it in a bottle. That stinks. I'll put it in a bottle. Get here quicker. Well, I think, thank you so much. It was good to see you this week. Roll will be back next week. And uh, if they have power and gerbils in South Africa. And don't forget, yeah. you can catch them live every Thursday morning. At, um, let me have to figure this out. 8 a.m., no, 9 a.m. Um, or 8 a.m. New York time for you people in New York and you people in South Africa, uh, whatever time it is. And then you can reach the rebroadcast every Sunday morning um, if you missed any part of it. And you can also catch it on wherever you get your podcasts. Look for Two Old Farts Making Noises. Look for Vaguely True, and you will find the show. Everybody, thank you very much. Have a wonderful time. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Cheers, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to this Raoul Woods, Rob Vega, whatever the hell he wants to call himself, fellow. You know, this this podcast thing, it, it makes him feel very important and he's a difficult fellow as it is to deal with. So thank you so much for putting up with him. And, and do take 